Good morning, class. Week six, Thomas Jefferson. What's the legacy of Thomas Jefferson? How has he been remembered? He's been a hero, right? Someone called him the people's president. He's the apostle of freedom, right? He's a national icon in a lot of ways. And yet he's also been personified and remembered by some as a villain, right? Christians might call him an enlightened deist, a radical Republican. They said he's overrated and maybe a walking contradiction, a life full of ironies. Well, how did, how did Jefferson want to be remembered? On his gravestone, uh, he actually got to design it himself. He wanted to be remembered for being the author of the Declaration of Independence, um, the religious statutes, the Virginia statutes on religious freedom, uh, and for the founding of the University of Virginia. Three things. But most of us don't have the opportunity to choose exactly what we're remembered and not remembered for. Uh, people are going to remember a lot of other things, so his legacy is going to extend far beyond those three things. Positive historians, right? Guys like Dumas of Malone, who dedicated forever amount of years to, to writing about him. Uh, Daniel Dreisbach, right, defending his religious freedom. David Barton, um, who in the Jefferson Lives would almost go as far as to say is that he is a evangelical orthodox guy that we are, should, should emulate. Uh, and then there's, there's some critical uh, historians of him. Um, among them, right, on the extreme end, Chris Pinto. Uh, would say that he was a uh, Freemason, Illuminati guy, had a conspiracy against America. And then there's a lot of just ambivalent historians. Historians that say positive, negative, yeah, there's a lot of each. Um, Ken Burns, Albert Nock, Andrew Bernstein, Annette Gordon-Reed among those. Uh, what I thought I would do just to morning is highlight some of his accomplishments uh, and then evaluate and, and share my personal kind of bias and my opinion at the end. Um, Thomas Jefferson was a known author he was a farmer, he was an inventor, he was a scientist, he was an architect, he was a musician, he was a man of many skills, and he also, right, is known for his defense of religious freedom. Now, the idea that the church and the government should have absolutely nothing to do with one another, uh, based on his letter to the Danbury Baptists, probably not the best interpretation overall, uh, but certainly he's known for highlighting uh, the distinction or separation that should be made between church and state. Um, at the same time, he's also controversial for a number of things, right? Especially as it relates to slavery, right? Some hear Thomas Jefferson and they say, oh yeah, he's that guy who wrote in the Declaration of Independence that all men should be free because they're created equal and yet he had slaves. What's up with that? Um, and they don't do their homework and they don't realize that pretty much his whole life he wanted to free his slaves. He wanted to abolish slavery, but he, he also was dedicated to uh, Republican ideals, uh, re dedicated to democracy, and it wasn't actually legal for a time for him to even free his slaves. He did uh, free them upon his death, um, and he was influential in the abolishing of the slave trade, though not ending uh, slavery itself. Uh, but he's also been attacked uh, for the potential relationship that he had with Sally Hemings. Let's just say smart scholars and historians have said yes he clearly had a father or father children with Sally uh, who was his slave mistress and other scholars have said no that it, it seems likely that it might have been somebody else he's been critiqued by Christians and others for his 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 views on human nature right his confidence that that reason um, and goodwill uh, could ultimately dictate that if men were left to themselves and given freedom they would choose to do what's right one of the big controversies is especially among evangelicals, the Jefferson Bible, which Jefferson never named his Bible the Jefferson Bible, but he did write a book that was a cutting of the teachings of Jesus called The Life and Morals of Jesus. Some have said, no, this was him getting rid of the supernatural, showing that he was a deist and he didn't believe that in, in miracles. Um, and others have, have argued and contended that the purpose was just that, a book about the life and teachings of Jesus, the great moral teacher whom he sought to emulate. Then there's the ironies of Thomas Jefferson's career. He was a huge proponent of freedom of the press. The problem for him was that that freedom of press was used to attack him both when he was campaigning to be president and while he was president. Um, and one of the really big ironies is, is probably the 1803 Louisiana Purchase, uh, when he, who was the champion of small government, of a limited executive, made the decision to double the size of the United States, which wasn't exactly constitutional. Um, so in some ways you could argue while he was the champion of small government, he actually did more um, and took more authority and power as an executive than did George Washington or John Adams before him. 
there's a ton on him, uh, and I we can't we don't have time to break down all the details of why he's great, why he's not, well, what, what should we think? But I, I'm gonna just share a few of my personal biases from having studied and read and, and taught. When I think of Thomas Jefferson on a personal note, that the the word or the, the the title that comes to mind is from the Pilgrim's Progress, um, and it's it's the character of the worldly wise man. Uh, it's when when the, the Pilgrim Christian is. Uh, getting close to, right, the gate, that he, the narrow gate he's supposed to enter. And Mr. World of Eisenman comes along and says, actually, that burden on your back, we can get rid of that if you just take a detour over to the town of Morality. And if you visit a guy there named Legality, or his son, Civility, and they can take care of your earthly problems. Um, and they, he leads Christian astray, and he nearly, right, perishes. The reality is I would view the legacy of, of Thomas Jefferson in, in a lot of ways as a tragedy. Right, he's a, he's a classic example of right, who's someone who is always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth, like Roman says. Um, he, was, he was someone who professed himself to be wise, and surely he was wiser than I, but, but became a fool. Um, right, the, the First Corinthians tells us that um, the preaching of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. Right, Thomas Jefferson wanted the life and the morals, the civility, the, the legality, the teachings of, of Jesus and Christianity. He wanted a good, moral, virtuous society, and yet when it's divorced from the cross, when it's separated from the, the full person of Jesus as God's son, um, it's incomplete. It's, it's a la legacy of, of tragedy, right? I, I would want him or myself to have a legacy of having fought a good fight, finished my course, kept the faith of someone who Jesus says, well done good and faithful servant. So Thomas Jefferson, a hero in, in so many ways, and yet a, a tragic legacy if he didn't know the person of Jesus. And, and may that be a challenge to us. Uh, we don't want to worship heroes. We want to learn about people in history. Um, but ultimately, uh, we are going to be remembered uh, for, for how we finished. Uh, we're going to be remembered for, for what we thought of Christ. Class, have a great uh, rest of the semester, and I look forward to, to hearing what you have to say about good old TJ. Have a great day. Bye.